I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my life.
done for another opportunity to bring you online worship. We know that we do not deserve to be in relationship with God. But we are so grateful that God still calls us friends. If you can, beloved, wherever you are, the type of the comments, I'm a friend of God. I'm a friend. I'm a friend. I'm a friend of God. We thank God for this opportunity to bring you online worship on this morning. No matter where you're watching us from, we'll be watching from Facebook Live. We'll be watching from our YouTube page or even our uh, church website. Wherever you're watching us from, we're just so glad that you decided to worship with us on this beautiful Lord's Day. As we say week after week that we know that we cannot do this without the help of the Lord. But we also know that we cannot have this online worship without our wonderful online worship team. And we thank God for them on this morning. We do thank God for our Minister of Music, Brother Kevin Brown. Amen. We thank God for our drummer, Brother Jamal Jackson. We do thank God for the smoothest bass play in all of West Baltimore, Brother Gary McCoy. We thank God. We thank God for the visionary who put this online worship together at the peak of the pandemic, Minister Daryl Holmes Jr. We thank God for you, sir. We thank God for our director, our director of our online worship, Sister Sky. Amen. Yeah. We do thank God for our director of our social media ministry, Sister Demetra Clark. Hallelujah. Yeah. We thank God for our spiritual encouragement, our deacon and training, Cassandra Kitchen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Please keep deacon and training, uh, Cassandra Kitchen, and all of our deacon and training uh, individuals in prayer, and they are wrapping up. Uh, I'm going to training for people being a deacon. Uh, listen, just because you don't see us does not mean we're not working. So we thank God for our deacons and training who have been uh, studying under Dr. John Blunt for uh, some time now and it's coming to a conclusion. But we thank God, we thank God for the church is still in business. We also thank God for the greatest trustee on this side of, of the Jordan River, uh, Trustee Charles Levi. Hallelujah. Amen. And while I'm thanking folks, let me take a moment of pastoral privilege to thank our deacons and our trustees. I do thank our joint board for making sure that our congregation stays connected. I thank God for our deacons for calling on members and picking up time from members uh, and just checking on folks, making sure that you are not forgotten. Also thank God for our trustees. Our trustees come in here week after week, uh, not only counting the funds, but also praying over the funds and praying over the hearts of the givers. Uh, we thank God that uh, as you continue to give, uh, that the trustees make sure that our funds, our gifts, our tithes, our offerings go to the right places. So I'm thankful today. I'm thankful, beloved, for uh, the repairs that's being done at the church even now. And I thank God for what has transpired and for what shall transpire. So we thank God for our offices on today and our leadership here at Mount Hebron. Now, we also know that this online worship is made possible through your support. We do thank God for your obedience uh, to the scriptures and being good stewards of the, of the sacred space called Mount Ethan. Now, beloved, we encourage you to know that if you need envelopes, you can, of course, email our trustees at trustee ministry at mounthebron.org and the envelopes shall be mailed to you here are our giving instructions right there on the screen, beloved. Uh, listen, your tithe and offerings can be made to give, give me a givelify Find us on Givelify at the historic Mount Hebron Baptist Church. You also find us on Cash App, our cash tag on Cash App is dollar sign M O U N T H E B R O N number two number six number five number one. Or you can mail them in, noting attention to the trustees. Now, uh, if you are not an able-bodied senior, you can arrange a pickup by the deacons, and the deacons will surely come and pick up your time and offers. But, of course, if you are able-bodied, you got the activities of your limbs, and you want to personally get, deliver them to the church, you can do that in our brass mailbox at the front of the church in the North Avenue entrance. Now, if you do so, please push the envelopes fully in the mail slot. I understand, beloved, we cannot do this without your giving. We cannot do this without your giving. We don't want anybody to come uh, and to tune in on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and there's nothing there. So we want you to continue to give so we can do uh, online worship during this pandemic. Now, during the season of the pandemic, beloved, we are focusing on our tithe, our 52-week offering, our HVAC, and our building fund. 
And so, beloved, we are encouraging you as you give on the day, um, tithe, that 10% off the top. I have my tithe right here in my hand. Um, so we thank God for the tithe on the day. Uh, we also thank God for our 52-week offering. We're on week number 41, which means $41 or $166 for the month of October. Continue to support our HVAC project. To date, we have raised $7,974.17. Amen. Hallelujah. We do thank God for those who gave uh, for the church anniversary, that $93 church assessment. If you have not given your church anniversary church assessment of $93, you still have time. Amen. Next, beloved, next, beloved, as you see on the screen, that today, today, beloved, we can have, we're going to have drive-through prayer. We're going to have drive-through prayer today at noon, weather permitting. And so, beloved, if you have not experienced drive-through prayer, I encourage you to come out today at noon, weather permitting, uh, for drive-through prayer. Uh, come and fellowship and receive your prayer for the week. Amen. Next, beloved. I want you to mark your calendars for our next Bible study series, our next Bible study series, beginning October 21st at 6.30 p.m. It will be on online and the conference call. We're talking about forgiveness and gratefulness, forgiveness and gratefulness. Beloved, I want you to be a part of this four-week Bible study series, beginning October 21st at 6.30, on forgiveness and gratefulness. Uh, again, just because the church building may be closed, the church of people were still open, and there's always room to learn more about the Word of God. Finally, beloved, finally, beloved, I am thankful that this month, the month of October, we're observing, we're celebrating my fifth pastoral anniversary. I thank God for five years here at the historic Mount Hebron Baptist Church. Amen. During this time, amen, during this time, listen, I'm not even asking for a love offering. A lot of times folks have these big to-dos, and I am thankful for your, for your drive-through celebrations and, and your virtual celebrations, and that's wonderful. But this is what we're going to do here at Mount Hebron this year. I'm asking all members, all members, and those who have been blessed by this pastoral ministry, if you are a member of Mount Hebron or you've been blessed by this pastoral ministry, hashtag everybody's pastor, I'm asking you to record a 15-second congratulatory video and email it to info at mounthebron.org. Info at mounthebron.org. The instructions are right there on the screen. Hashtag uh, Dr. B Whipple 5. Do hashtag Dr. B Whipple 5. We do thank God for those of you who have already uh, recorded your videos and sent them in. Uh, you can do it as a ministry, you can do it as individuals. Uh, but we thank God for those uh, who are going to celebrate in this creative way. And so, beloved, we thank God. Oh, for one more announcement, and I'm done. Uh, Mount Hebron Live, hashtag Mount Hebron Live. You know, beloved, uh, that every week uh, when we were in service, we would have uh, selfies and ussies of folks, and we cannot do that right now. But I encourage you to take a selfie or ussie of yourself or with your whoever with you um, and uh, post it online with the hashtag Mount Hebron Live, Mount Hebron Live. Thank you, God, uh, for the opportunity to fellowship and worship in a very creative way. Now, beloved, we thank God for... Uh, our music ministry is going to come uh, with a few selections after which we shall open the book and receive a message of hope on this glorious Lord's Day. Would you do me a favor and type it in the comments? Amen, amen, amen.
verses 1 through 8, the New King James Version says these words, Psalm 34, beginning at verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Finally, verse 8 declares, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. As you take your seats, you take your seat, I'm going to talk about for a few moments the reason I keep going. 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 David is one of the most interesting people in the Bible. Now, I am forever and will be grateful for Jesus in the scriptures, God's only begotten son who died on the cross, buried in a borrowed tomb, and was resurrected so we might have the gift of eternal salvation. I am thankful and grateful for Jesus. But in the Old Testament, there is David. David is a more relatable biblical figure while Jesus is the one who we strive to be more like. When we really look at the life resume of David, yes, I believe all of us can relate to David. We look like David. We smell like David. We've had similar David-like experiences. We've made David-like mistakes. But in spite of that, beloved, it never stopped you from having a unique relationship with God. That's what David had, beloved. He had a unique relationship with God. I know folk judged him, came to all types of conclusions about him, but at the end of the day, he was a man after God's own heart. And I truly believe as David knew God had his back, that David, watch this, could keep going. Uh, don't believe me? Well, remember now, David took down the lion and the bear. David defeated the giant named Goliath. David was king of a great people, and through it all, here it is, uh, God had his back. Who was glad to declare in the tenth month of the year uh, that God still got your back? Through every financial struggle, through every unexpected setback, through every illness, uh, God still got your back. Uh, through dangers, toils, and snares, uh, I've already come. God got my back. And because God got my back, I'm going to keep going. So here it is, beloved, through this text, David kept going for two reasons. Y'all write this down, put this in the notes section, y'all, and put this in the comments. The first reason, the first reason uh, David kept going was because here it is, uh, David made the divine declaration. David made the divine declaration. Your first point on day, the reason I keep going uh, is because I made the divine declaration. Verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord uh, at all times. Uh, his praise uh, shall continually be in my mouth. Uh, that's a divine declaration. Uh, here's what you need to understand on this beautiful Lord's day. Uh, this declaration uh, was made in the middle of rejection. Mm -hmm. Here it is, y'all. Biblical history reminds us that Ambimelech, the king of Gath, drove David away, uh, rejecting him. David experienced rejection, so you ain't the first one. But in the middle of his rejection, he made the declaration that he was going to keep going. Too many times, beloved, in our rejection, we make the wrong declaration. We want to fuss folk out. Uh -huh. We want to get revenge, and, and we want to show our backside. And, and
and tell folk let the doorknob hit you where the good Lord splits you. But, but David reminds us to focus on, on God and God alone. Focus your energy and your attention on God. But let me get deeper in the text, y'all. For many of us, verse 1 is a shout and a challenge. Uh -huh. Verse 1 is a shout and a challenge. Why is that, Pastor? Because we hear it in the church all the time. I will bless the Lord at all times. You ready to jump? You ready to shout? You ready to slap by with your neighbor and declare, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. It sounds good. It makes us feel good. But the challenge is, will you really bless the Lord at all times? All times. When you broke up, all times. When when you send a folk uh, all times, uh, when the doctor gives you bad news all times, uh, when you're uncertain about tomorrow all times, uh, in the middle of a pandemic all times, uh, you got your stimulus check on Friday and it's gone by Saturday all times, uh, in grief, uh, in sorrow, in sadness all times, uh, in your in between moments all times, uh, when you don't want to shout uh, and all you want to do is cry, will you bless the Lord? at all time. David, I want you to know that every one of us in here will have challenging moments in life. But there is a God who is above all of our challenging moments. In the middle of that, here it is. Make the divine declaration of I will go. I know you can give up. I know you can pack your bags and go home. But your divine declaration says, I will go. In spite of it all, I will go. Make up in your mind how the rest of your day and how the rest of your week and how the rest of your 2020 is going to make it happen. Listen, let your atmosphere know I will be blessed. Let your atmosphere know I will try again. Let the universe know I will move forward. I will make the best out of every situation. I'm making the divine declaration. I'm not going to stop, but I'm going to keep going anyhow. So they David made the divine declaration. Final point, y'all. David keep going because of the roadblock removal. Roadblock removal. First point, y'all. Divine declaration. Put that in the comments. Second point, y'all. Roadblock removal. Roadblock removal. Put that in the comments, y'all. Roadblock removal. Here's set up, y'all. Verse 4. Verse 4 said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Too many times we want to try stuff on our own without any help. Folk got ego issues. We don't want anybody to say they did it for us. But I know of the shadow of a doubt that, that if you really want to be free, beloved, if you really want to live without any blockages, you'll have to call on the name of the Lord because those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And here's the thing, y'all. The text said in verse number four, delivered me from all my fears. Here it is. If we can be honest to them, all of us, all of us have some fears. And these fears are roadblocks to our blessings. So once you get the fear out of the way, the blessing is on the way. Preach, Pastor Lippo. See, once you get the fear out of the way, the blessing is on the way. Uh, is your blessing in the lesson? Uh, David gives God praise uh, for the deliverance uh, experience uh, in his life, knowing God responds uh, to the prayers of his people. Uh, God, in this season, huh, remove every roadblock. God, uh, remove everything that's not sanctioned by you. God, uh, remove every hindrance. God, uh, remove every distraction. God, uh, remove every nightmare in the name of Jesus. Why? Because your calling is too costly. Uh, it took you a long time to get here, uh, so now you're going to take your time. Uh, your destiny uh, will impact the nations. Your anointing is too valuable. You got a legacy that you're trying to leave for others. Uh, so don't you dare get sidetracked another 
today, uh, but you can look to the hills uh, for which cometh your help, uh, knowing your help uh, comes from the Lord uh, who made heaven and earth. Uh, here's your theological thesis statement, uh, and I'll see y'all next Sunday. Uh, see, this psalm uh, exhibits the happiness uh, of those who trust in God. Uh, if I can testify today, uh, I'm going to declare to you, beloved, five years ago, uh, today I stood as a candidate uh, for the position of pastor uh, of the historic Mount Hebron Baptist Church. Uh, it was five years ago on this very Sunday. Uh, it was Voices Anniversary. Uh, they are their wonderful gold and black singing to the glory of God. It was five years ago today, and the only reason uh, that five years later uh, we've seen growth in this house uh, is because we got to trust in God. Uh, it ain't trusting our money. Uh, it ain't trusting people. Uh, it ain't trusting your government job. Uh, but we trust in God and God alone. Uh, and over these last five years, uh, because we trusted in God, uh, the parking lot is paid off. Uh, we have hit a schedule. Uh, our ministerial staff has expounded. Uh, and then we got a band uh, that's stronger than ever. Uh, five years later, uh, God has shown us uh, that we got to do what we've been called to do uh, for the foundation of the world. Uh, five years later, uh, God still uses us uh, to feed the hungry, uh, to clothe the naked, uh, to provide freedom to the spiritually captive. Uh, five years later, uh, we can testify uh, and declare uh, there is no secret uh, to what my God can do. Uh, what he's done for others, uh, he'll do the same for you. Uh, is there anybody here uh, who can declare, uh, I will trust him. Uh, I will trust him uh, day by day, uh, week by week, uh, month by month, uh, and throughout the year. Uh, I will trust him. Uh, here it is, y'all. Uh, trust in him. Uh, he will not leave you uh, whatsoever. Uh, he is made bring. Uh, if by earthly uh, friends were shaken, uh, still more closely uh, to him cling. Uh, Oh man. 
memory. I did not get here, but love it. But I went my more house time. I did not get here, but love it. On my own report. I didn't get here because of me. But I got here, y'all. Because of God and God alone. Who can keep it real with me on a Sunday morning? And so I got here because of God. Oh, <laughs> 
been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Now, Lord, bless this moment. Be the one who needs to receive eternal salvation. May they push away all fear and move to where you are leading them. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for sounding me. In Jesus' name we be pray. Amen. 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 People of God, prepare to depart this place of God's presence. We invite you today at 12 noon, weather permitting, to come to our drive through prayer. I would love to see you, our Mount Hebrew members, our pandemic members. If you've been tuning in to this worship experience more than two weeks, guess what? You're a pandemic member. And you need to meet your pastor in person. Come on down, 2651 West North Avenue in West Baltimore. I'd love to see you and pray with you. Your prayer for the week. Weather permitting 12 noon right here at the parking lot of Mount Hebrew. We thank God for this worship experience. I pray that you share this video. If not, you can share it right now. Thanking God that you have a reason to keep going, and his name is Jesus. As you repent of the beloved, it is my prayer that this week, this week, beloved, you will hear the voice of God loud and clear. This week, you will remove all distractions. This week, you will keep going, and you got a reason, and his name is Jesus. As the Bible declares, as Moses spoke to Aaron, who spoke to the people of Israel, declared this, these words, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord made his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord of his countenance upon you, 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 and you too. And may he give you peace. In Jesus' name we